Hey YouTube, this is Print Practical. Today we're going to be talking about my Ender 3 Max and the thermal runaway issues I've been having. This printer is awesome. It only costs $329 and it has a huge print area of 300 by 300 by 350. Uh, it's a really cool printer and it's only about three months old, but recently I've been having some thermal runaway halts happening uh, during some longer prints, which is pretty frustrating. I talked to Creality Support and they walked me through some diagnosing steps which really didn't yield any results but then they assumed what the part was that was needed um, luckily i didn't have to wait for that i ran to a local micro center and i was able to pick up the part and fix the printer so today i'm going to run you through exactly what they ran me through instead of it taking you 11 days you could possibly do it in like an hour and hopefully you can get your printer back up and running. So let's go start taking this apart. Okay, so first things first, let's heat up the nozzle and pull the filament out. All right, next we're gonna shut off the printer and we're going to push the bed all the way back. So that's gonna expose this little screw here. We're gonna pull that out. Now we're gonna flip the whole printer on its side. So we wanna clear this space off a little bit. And then we can tilt it right on over. I'm gonna take the power off. All right. All right, so then we have this screw, this screw, and this screw to take out. Two things, I wanna note that this screw right here is the longer one. So remember that when you're putting it back together. Also, there is a fan that's on here that cools the, the motherboard. So just be careful of the wires. So the first step that Creality wanted me to do was catch the, the thermal runway on video. This was really hard because it happened randomly and it would usually happen after an hour or two. I eventually did catch it and it did show that it was something on the hot end side and not on the bed heating unit. Okay, so the first thing that Creality Support wanted me to measure was the resistance of the nozzle heating tube, which I believe they mean the heater cartridge in the hot end. And I'll put a diagram at the bottom and show which port that is, but they want you to measure the resistance of that and they said it should come out to 14.4K. Um, this is where I got a little confused because if you look online or on Google, people say that, you know, the ideal resistance of a heating cartridge is, um, uh, anywhere from five to 20 ohms. Um, so, I mean, I'll probe mine anyway. And I sent Creality a video of this and they just kind of ignored it, but you know, it's at 15.9, um, so I don't know what that tells you, but it didn't tell me anything. Um, so the second thing that they wanted us to measure uh, was they wanted us to measure the voltage uh, going through the heater tube or the heater cartridge um, when you're heating the extruder. So we're gonna turn the printer on and we're going to go to prepare preheat PLA and then we'll just do just the extruder and we should be able to probe the same thing and we see 24 volts or 24.1 volts that's exactly what they expected they said that it should be 24 volts so the last measurement that Creality wants us to take is the resistance of the thermistor the thermistor is the plug all the way on the outside of the main board. I could put a diagram with that, that port highlighted and it is a two pin plug. I have a set of alligator clip leads for my multimeter and I just connected that to two wires so I can easily probe this plug. When you're initially taking this apart, if it's your first time, Creality hot glues all these plugs into the main board. So it's a big pain in the butt. 
uh, just take an X-Acto blade and carefully cut the hot glue out so that you could pull the plug out. Creality says that the expected value is about 100K. Okay, so it's showing 104.6K at room temperature. Now I can't say for sure that this is room temperature because it's only been an hour since I shut off the printer completely. Okay, if you got to this point in the video and you have similar results to me when you measure these measurements, then I'm just gonna tell you now, go to Micro Center, go to Amazon, and buy a $3 thermosistor for an Ender 3. Um, this will solve your problem, or at least it did for me, and it's a very cheap part, so it's worth a try. Um, Creality did end up sending me a thermistor, and I didn't try it yet. Um, the only difference between this and the one that I bought from Micro Center is that the Micro Center part was for a Ender 3 Pro, um, and it was a little shorter because the wire doesn't have to be as long because the, uh, the print dimensions are a lot smaller on that printer. So I installed the Ender 3 Pro thermosistor and everything seemed to go back to normal and I've performed multiple over 24 hour prints with no problem. So I'm gonna show you now just how to quickly install that. It is your choice whether you want to try and thread the new thermistor through the wire loom all the way back to the main board. I personally just ran it um, outside of the wiring loom and yes that probably looks ghetto and bad but if i've only had the printer for three months and this part already went bad chances are it's going to go bad again and i would just like to have a quick easy swap so let's start replacing this thermistor okay so we're going to start by removing the hot end cover got two small screws here at the top also want to mention that you'll probably have to cut a bunch of zip ties if you're trying to uh, run the wire for, through the loom. I definitely attempted it and it was just too tedious and I didn't feel like caring about it. So I just ended up running it separately. So the thermistor is a temperature sensor that looks like a tiny little bulb. And that actually goes in the side of the hot end right here. So when you're replacing the thermistor, you take out this Phillips head screw and you pull the old thermistor out, you push the new thermistor in, and then you put the screw down and it clamps on the wire on either side. So there's two wires that come off the thermistor and you're gonna clamp it between this Phillips head screw. You just lightly turn in the Phillips head screw until it's holding that in place. You don't wanna squeeze it too hard or it might cause a break in the wire then you're back to square one again. So I'm not gonna actually do it because this is already installed and this is the new one, but that's how you get to it. You put the new one in, you run the wire around the whole loom until you get back to the main board and you plug in the new one. All right, so thanks for watching. I hope this helped somebody. This was an easy fix. You know, you can do it in 15 minutes if you don't wanna run the wire all the way through the loom and it's a very cheap fix it's only three dollars and i looked up the bed thermosistor as well and that's only five so either way i would start with this i would just buy one if you're getting thermal runaway and you want to just quickly swap it to see if that fixes it it's only three dollars um so thanks for watching subscribe and let me know if you want me to design anything or go over anything on these two printers thanks